that patch is drying on that bridge that we did, I'm going to see what we can do about this. Uh, probably not much, I gotta be honest. It's pretty hard to fix stuff like this, especially in the top and especially where it's been, you know, it's faded here too. So, I mean, like in other words, it's black to, it's a sunburst and wow, it's hard enough to fix it if it's one solid color. It's nearly impossible this way. But this finish is blistered and it's pulled up, pulled up and pulled off. I'm gonna start in a place like this where it's black, where, you know, maybe it would be a little less noticeable than it would be out here. And I'm just gonna experiment with some, some ideas. It, I mean, the finish is melted, it's gone. So there's really not much there. I mean, you can't just buff that out. It's not gonna happen. So what I was thinking about doing was taking a, taking little tiny amounts of lacquer thinner, trying to melt the finish and kind of paint it around and put a little black dye in there, light them out and and, and maybe a little bit of brushing lacquer and see if we can't just kind of blend it back. I don't know, you know, you just gotta try something. You never know till you try. And by the way, just to be clear, I did not take these pick guards off. They were already off when the guitar got here. Not that it makes much difference, but I just thought I'd let you know that. Got a little metal container here. I'm going to put in a little bit of brushing lacquer. I'm not sure just what brush I'm going to use yet here. I want it to be somewhat stiff. I think this little stiff brush looks like that would work pretty good. I don't know if any of this makes any sense or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. Figure it won't hurt to try. So many things I'm using these days are from my viewers, just like these little eyedroppers. I appreciate that very much. I Again, without looking it all up, you guys have been so kind to me and sent me so many things that I can't keep all the names straight. And even if there was only one or two things, to be perfectly honest with you, I couldn't keep the names straight. I'm terrible with names. But uh, I just want you to know I do appreciate all the things you sent to me. I really do. You know, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm really not encouraging other people to send me stuff. I, I, you know, I hope nobody thinks that I'm fishing for, for stuff. Cause I'm not, I'm not fishing for stuff. I really am not. Um, I don't want anybody to feel like they need to send me anything. But on the other toke, on the other side, those folks that have sent me stuff, I truly want you to know I, I really appreciate it. Thinning down this brushing lacquer here a little bit. Getting it kind of thin. I'm not even sure how to try this. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of lacquer right here on this spot. Put the brushing lacquer on here. See what it does. Not much actually, to be perfectly honest. Now I'll take a different brush and I'll get a little bit of the black dye. It's pretty black, unfortunately. Probably too black. Just trying to melt it together to see what we can do. Wow, it's kind of pulled out the wood and everything. It's, it's, it's deep. That's, that's your other problem with this kind of a thing. It's, it's a deep hole. I was hoping that maybe the other stuff would blend in a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be. Really doesn't seem like it's doing very good at all. Figure anything I do ain't gonna really hurt it because it's pretty bad. That's not much of an improvement, if any. Yeah, didn't really do anything. And maybe this finish, it may not be lacquer. You know, you never know on this stuff what it is. Doesn't seem like it's doing very well. Attempt number one would be, I would call a fail. It didn't really do anything that I think improved anything. Didn't really hurt anything to speak of. I wonder what this finish is. I would have thought if it was lacquer thinner, it would have just melted it pretty quickly. 
To be honest, it doesn't seem like it's doing much at all. You know what? It's it's almost better using my finger on it like that. Might have invented a new technique. That didn't help a lot, but it did. That's a little bit maybe of an improvement. I'm not putting any color on this. I'm just rubbing it around, just trying to blend it and smear it. I wouldn't call that very good, unfortunately. I'd like to see it a lot better. Maybe I'll try a little acetone, see what that does. I doubt it's going to do anything either. You can see there, that's the spot I was working on. It didn't really improve or, you know, hurt anything, I don't think. I'm going to try a little acetone. I'm going to try different things and just see if anything works. I've got a little acetone in my eyedropper here and, and I'm just rubbing that in there and trying to smear it around and see if that will blend in some of this color. That's actually doing more than the lacquer did by a lot. Um, you know, and, and wow, that's, that's actually doing something there. You can see it's cutting it um, by the color. That's, that's showing a little bit of promise. It's not great because, you know, you got, the problem is that it's, you know, it's missing the finish, but, but I'm trying to blend the, where the finish is gone. I need something to smear the old finish back into that because it's uh, impossible to match it. It's just impossible. So here's, here's a little bit of acetone out here in the brown black area that we were trying earlier. Let's see if we can melt and blend any of this. Can't really say that I'm improving it much. Put a little bit of lacquer in with that. The acetone definitely melts it better than the lacquer does, which really surprises me because generally that lacquer melts anything and acetone often doesn't do as much. It, to some way of looking at it, I think it's actually a slight improvement, but it's only slight. Out here where this finish is really messed up, I'm going to see if I can blend this and see if we can smooth this out. Really didn't expect any positive results with the acetone, I gotta be honest. I thought it would probably be the last thing that would work, but it seems to actually be doing something. I wish the results were a little more positive. I took, the, uh, took one of those little tiny needles and put it on the end of this eyedropper. This eyedropper's a little large. And that little needle helps control how much it's coming out a little bit better. That helps. Just kind of jammed it on there. I wish it would blend it a little better. Is it's not covering the spots that are in bare. I was hoping that the blend would just kind of cover those spots and just smear it around. And then I'm hoping we can sand it out and buff it out and you know put a little finish over the top of it and call it good. Well, to my eye, I think it's an improvement. I, it's hard to say as nasty as it looks because it doesn't look good, but I think it's an improvement. Yeah, I think it's an improvement. Let's see what we can do with this. This big open area here is bugging me. Maybe we can blend it back. It's definitely melting the finish around it, which is good. It's the only hope I got, because trying to match it any other way ain't going to happen. That's definitely an improvement. You know, I'm, I'm looking 
I'm, I'm trying to see what it's going to look like after it's buffed out, and, and I'm pretty sure it's going to look better this way than it would have if had we just buffed it out with those bright spots. I mean, I don't think we're setting the world on fire or nothing here, but I think we're improving it. I've heard a lot of people say this acetone is bad a lot of ways. I don't like breathing it here. I'm going to turn on the fan in the bathroom, which will exhaust a lot of this out of here. I have one of those industrial fans in the bathroom, which really moves the air. So it'll get help clean the air here. It definitely is a lot better than your average little bathroom fan. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm somewhat impressed with that. that. I know it looks probably looks horrible to you guys right now, but that's actually blending the colors back into it, and uh, it's given me a fighting chance of making it look halfway decent here. Friends, I interrupt this video to show you four things. Here's the first one. Oh my gosh, yes. It's a giant roll of toilet paper. Someone thought I had a potty mouth and they sent this to me. <laughs> no, actually it's a giant roll of shop towels. It was given to me as a gift from uh, the uh, Regal uh, Grandma folks. Uh, you saw that video, the two-part video on uh, Grandma's Regal Pride and Joy. And so they were very happy with their instrument and this was a gift from them. So thank you very much, I appreciate that. I also got a, just a check in the mail here, actually it's a money order, uh, from a fellow who wants to remain anonymous, uh, so all I'll say is thank you Don. And I appreciate that. And then I got this uh, in the mail from a fellow that uh, uh, the only name I see was on the box lid, and it's from a fellow in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> Baton Rouge. Um, and it is a handmade uh, glass arrowhead there. Very nice. Very nicely done. Uh, you can tell that he, he knows what he's doing. Very well made. And I, I, I know it's not original from back then because of how it's made and what it's made out of and et cetera and so forth, but it's, it's beautiful. He definitely is a craftsman when it comes to uh, flint napping. You can tell that. So, uh, Mr. Lanier, I believe it is, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll hang that. I'll put this on display. And the last thing I want to show you is these old guitar parts. Uh, I believe they're from a Harmony, according to uh, the, the customer. And uh, there's a tailpiece and some tuning keys and uh, a, a pick guard that I don't know that I could use the pick guard too much because it looks like it is broken pretty badly, but, uh, but that's okay. Can, sometimes we use pieces of plastic to repair things, so you never know, we might use that too. But I thank you, Mr. Uh, Edward Peterson from uh, Ottisville, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. I sure appreciate it. If you've got old guitar parts like that laying around that you're not never going to use, um, the the deal you know is with me. I don't charge any customers for old guitar parts. In other words, if you send me an old guitar and it needs a part, and if I happen to have the part in stock, uh, just you know from old stock like this, I just put it on there and there's no charge. It's just, I, the only charge is just obviously for my time. And uh, so if you do have old parts, you can rest assured that they'll go to a good cause. Thank you very much. You have to kind of blend a bigger area than you're fixing because you gotta blend the whole thing back together. I am definitely seeing an improvement in the 
overall look of this. It's kind of a weird process, but I think if I hang in there, I think we can make this actually fairly decent. It's in the wind, it's in the wind that you leave and me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. Before you up and leave me, there's something you should know. Just sit right down beside me. Just want well, guys, I tell you what, I know that looks horrible as far as the roughness goes, but look at the color. It's getting back to where it was. It's it's got potential here, I'm telling you. This is a technique I've never heard of or tried before. And uh, I thought, you know, it only makes sense if you could just melt the finish around it and blend it together, it would be better than trying to patch the dead gum finish. And then we could put finish over this once we get this kind of blended and sanded and you know leveled out, we could put finish over this and I mean, it ain't going to look, I don't think it's going to look perfect by any stretch, but doggone, I think that's as good as you could do, as bad as this was. Something's bothering me here now. This is starting to look a little grayish. That ain't good. I don't know what's going on there. Didn't have to have that happen. That's something strange going on right there. That might have been glue or something from the pick guard. I don't know. Doggone it. Can't win for losing. It was doing so nice there and then that just got weird looking there. I don't know. This is the lacquer thinner again. Maybe that'll dry that part out. We found we love each other until the end of time. It's I'm gonna let that dry and see what that looks like after it's dry. I don't have any idea what to expect. I don't like the looks of this. That may be moisture in the air causing it to milk up. That may be what that is. I'll try heating it with the heater, although that's dangerous with this stuff because it's highly flammable. Here's a good close-up of that repaired area there. Now we just got to turn it over and drill the holes back in it. So we're going to do that before we glue it back on. I think the moment is finally here. We're going to go ahead and get this thing glued on. It's in the wind that you need. Got more glue on there than I need. I'll spread it on this side just to make sure we got good coverage all the way around. Me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. call that I made when I made the bridge plate I put that back in there first and now I'm tightening this down and I'm using this big flat piece of wood to spread the stress out because this is just a flat bridge it's not doesn't have the contours like most bridges I know you found another who wants you love so fine but don't that's pretty good it's probably as good as we're going to do. Now I'll just do some cleanup. Unfortunately, I can't get inside there to clean up. And I'm sure there's going to be squeeze out in there, so that'll probably have to be cleaned up afterwards, unfortunately. You know I love you, darling. All right, we're going to put this thing to bed for the night, and we'll tackle it again tomorrow. It's been 24 hours, basically, or at least overnight. Not quite 24 hours yet.
and the bridge looks good it looks really good and solid all the way around there is some squeeze out down inside here which I knew was going to happen and man I don't know how I'm going to do clean that up if I'm even going to clean it up it's just you know it's really you could make more trouble than you got if you start messing in there you know right now there's two issues first of all I just checked the neck alignment with the bridge it's just slightly off it's not horrible but this should be up you know a sixteenth of an inch at least right there and we're right on the top of the bridge which is better than being below it so I think we can live with that and you know the neck itself is as far as I can tell is perfectly solid I don't see any reason to break the joint at least at this time we'll set it up and see just how bad it is um, it's going to be a little bit high but I think that this particular customer would be happy with that because he doesn't really want to sink a ton of money in this he just wants to kind of get it playable so we'll start there and if he decides that it's too high we can always do a neck reset but right now I'm going to try to smooth out this mess that we've got here um, I am happy with the coloring though I think that did improve the coloring a lot uh, it may not have uh, you know may not improved anything else but I think it helped with the coloring and the blotching so I'm gonna start with some like this may be this may not even be coarse enough but I'm gonna start with some 320 wet or dry just to knock down this roughness I'm gonna try not to get into the bare spots too much just trying to hit the the high spots actually so won't you please consider our life and hopes and dreams it's in the wind it's in the wind uh, get a damp cloth and wipe that off and see where we're headed well as i suspected it's not great but it doesn't i don't think it looks any worse than it did you know it's dull and nasty looking obviously but at least most of the white spots where the finish came off is blended to some degree and it looks like it matches so just gonna keep working at it and the real rough areas I'll just keep working at in your eyes you can't fool me this time well you know it still looks bad but dang it looked bad before you know I don't know what to do with that now I I know it needs some kind of coating over it I want it better I really do but it's, I don't think it's any worse than it was that's for sure I think it's I think it's better than it was still hitting the roughest spots it's in the wind it's in the wind it's in the wind it ain't great by any stretch but it sure looks better to me than it did with all that big white blotchy junk all over the place with the finish pulled off now some of that finish is covering everything at least it's just not very smooth if we had some way to smooth it out now we'd be in very good shape well I was just talking away and you weren't paying any attention cause I didn't have the camera on I've taken this Minwax brushing lacquer I've taken four parts lacquer to three parts thinner which thinned it down quite a bit it's not quite 50 50 but it's thinner and my idea was to keep brushing it on here and trying to blend the finish but it's not going to blend it doesn't look like based on my little bit of google research it is an isocellulose lacquer or at least it should be here's the way i look at this kind of thing guys i you know everybody knows you can't really make a silk purse out of a sow's ear 
but you might be able to make a cloth purse out of a sow's ear. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to make a cloth purse out of a sow's ear rather than a silk purse. At least then you'll have a purse, you know. It's it's bad. It ain't going to get much better, you know. When you screw something up that bad, it's tough to fix. I mean, sure, you could refinish the whole thing, don't get me wrong. But I know he doesn't want to go to that kind of expense. And I'm sure I could refinish it, it would look pretty decent. But we're not going there. He just said, do what you can, and if you can make it look a little better, great. If not, don't worry about it. And so... You know, with that attitude, I think I've actually made it look a little better, especially if we can sand this out, buff it out, and stuff like that, and make it look blend into the old finish. So you can see there, it's still just as blotchy as heck, but I don't know of anything that's going to fix that. From across the room, it's not nearly as bad as it was. Uh, it's still noticeable, but from across the room before, it was very noticeable. It's been several more days since I was working on this guitar. Uh, just so many projects. And I've left this sit here like this for several days, so I am now ready to stick this pick guard on. It's not my favorite pick guard that I've seen. I ordered in another one. I didn't like it at all. This one's better than the first one, so... This is the one we're going with. Uh, you could spend several hundred dollars and get one that's original, um, but that's more than I'm spending on on the whole repair. So, or that's about what I'm spending on the whole repair. Let's put it that way. So, can't see doubling his cost just for a pick guard. Once you stick them, you can't really do much about it. By the way, I sanded off the area where this is going, got it real smooth. And I just kind of looked at this line right here and tried to get it even. And the rest of it is pretty close, but it's not absolutely perfect. It's just close. Like there's a little bit right here, a little bit right here. You know, you just gotta go with what you got. And, you know, it's not like it's a permanent one-time shot type deal. You can always take it off, put something else on if, you, if you're not happy with this. This was only a few dollars compared to spending several hundred dollars for one that quote-unquote is supposed to be original. The tape left a little residue there, so I'm going to see if I can get that off. I think it'll come off. All right, we're getting close to stringing this thing up. Well, the only thing we got left to do now is a fret job I'm not going to film the fret job because I'm just doing the same old thing that you've seen me do dozens of times before. I've already started leveling the frets, just leveling them, but I thought I ought to at least give you a close-up of the fretboard so you can see how bad it really is. It is in pretty bad shape, at least in terms of looks. Um, there, there's a lot of deep grooves in the in the frets. I've already filed quite a bit of it out because I did start leveling it already. As you can see, the tops are flat on the frets. So anyway, that's a before shot. We'll show you what it looks like after. Well, I got to tell you, I had to file the tar out of those. And you might say, you should just replace them because that's the first thing everybody says. Just replace them. Well, you know, that's easy said, not so easy done. First of all, to replace them, you got to take them all out. You're going to chip up the fretboard all over the place. You've got all the, you know, the binding on the sides that the frets have to be notched, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So there's just tons of extra work. You got to drive them all back in, all the trauma that causes. Then the first thing you got to do after you get them all in there is you got to level them all like this. It took me 15 minutes to level these and it would have taken me a minimum, if I'm really fast, an hour to put new ones in and get it to this shape. Probably closer to an hour and a half. 
So it's like 20 bucks versus you know anywhere from 80 to 120 dollars to do this much work. Now we're still not finished, but I'm just giving you a comparison there. There you go. That's why we did it. And and it's also it's kind of like your bath towel. You know you can wash it after every use, or you can use it twice and then wash it. And that's kind of the way this is. We're using these frets twice. The next time they're going to have to be replaced. These were probably the deepest grooves that you can make in frets without ever filing them. I mean, I don't think these frets had ever been filed and the grooves go very deep. A lot, a lot of people say their f grooves are deep in their fretboard, but a lot of it is optical illusion. Like it, it, that mirror effect makes it look deeper than it is. These suckers were deep, <laughs> just plain deep. So I think we've got it. This one here, the, the deepest one I kept my eye on, and it's just barely starting to disappear. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Now when I recrown them, you won't even hardly notice that one. I think we're good. So at least that's what I'm hoping for. So there's your after shot of the fretboard. Yeah, there's still some fingernail grooves in there, as you can see right in there. And you could fill those, but on a rosewood fingerboard, you pretty much always see the fill. You could fill it with clear. That's probably the best option. I could fill it with uh, CA glue. and uh, But I'm just choosing to leave it like it is. I've got not, most of the finger grooves are out of there. About the only place I couldn't get them out was right next to where the pearl was. But otherwise, it looks... You know, if you look at the frets themselves, they look perfect now. So again, there would be a situation where you replace frets and you don't really need to replace them. You can just recrown them and use them one more time. Because, you know, you had to take the fretboard down anyway because of all the grooves in it. So the, really, the, the relative height to the fretboard, the frets are still plenty high. They're not crazy high. They're actually lower than brand new frets would be, but they're, but they're high enough. And everything is turned out just real nice. I'm going to inspect it one more time. I think I remember hearing a buzz in here. I sort of hear something, but that could be those tuning keys. I'm just going to really get in there with a mirror and a light and inspect it really close and make sure everything's fine before I string it up. I checked it all over for loose braces. I couldn't find anything. So, you know, and I really did take a lot of time and look in there really good and, and tried to wiggle things with my hand. I couldn't find anything loose. So I'm going to call it good. Um, the last little tidbit is there's no truss rod cover on this. And, you know, typically just buy a truss rod cover put on there. But I don't find one that fits. Here's a, a brand new one. Still has the plastic over it and it doesn't fit. It's way too short. Uh, this is the shape it had on it more and it's uh, just a little too short and it's a little too narrow. Here's one that was homemade. It's the right length. The holes actually match up but it's still too narrow. So I think I'm just going to use this one as a pattern draw around it with a sharpie and use the outside edge of the sharpie mark as my width and just make a new one. That's the best I can come up with. I just got a piece of label here that I will use for making my pattern. Um, I'll take this sharpie, draw around it like this. Okay, so that should work pretty good. The holes are in about the right place, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark the holes. And now I should be able to cut that out to that black design there. Leave the black on there and it should be big enough. It's in the wind. It's in the wind. Then what I'll do is uh, I'll test it to make sure it's going to be big enough. And I still have, and I can still tweak it on the wood itself by not cutting so narrow if I need to. But there, there's the outside pattern. Hopefully it'll fit on here. It should fit on there. Just barely fits, but it fits. Let me just double check it on the guitar, make sure it's going to be big enough. I think we could get by with that, but I, even on these sides here, it's still a little narrow. So I'm just going to, when I cut it out, I'll just cut it out a hair proud, and we should be good to go. Matter of fact, I could 
leave the pencil mark then I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna use that as my pattern I was gonna stick it on there but I think I'll just draw it on there so I'll go cut that out I think you can see that the one I just finished making is significantly bigger it's just way bigger but when you put it on here it looks right you know so now I'm just gonna double check the holes to make sure they're gonna line up I think what I'll do is I'll just stick this in the hole here and kind of get it in the center and see if it's in the hole here yeah you know, the hole there just kind of full up filled up let's see actually they need to be a little bit further apart than these so what I'm going to try to do here is actually use this as my spacing deal here. So that should give me a pretty good spacing there. I think we got it. Should be able to drill that out and bring it back, put her on. Well there's a look at the truss rod cover. It fits it just fine. It was a big hole so it needed a big cover. But everything looks good now. I just oiled it with some linseed oil. Well, the last thing I've got to do is make the saddle for this. And looking at, down the neck angle back to that, uh, it's, you know, a little, this is, I wish this was up just a hair. I mean, it's almost level. It's just a hair below level. If it was level or even just a little bit high, I'd be much happier. But, um... It still should work, and I think we can still get the action down, but because of that, we won't be needing a very tall saddle, I don't think. So, I'm going to measure the depth of this, and the depth is about 115 thousandths, double check that. 108, I got that time. 113. 114 so we're going to call that 115 thousandths on the depth and um, I don't think it's going to need much too very high above it so uh, if we double that at 230 let's just make it a quarter inch high to start with even though I know that's going to be quite high so we'll just make it 0 0.250 on the height it's 125 thousandths width and uh, 2 inches 995 thousandths in length. So let's get that made and then we'll see how that looks. You run into all kinds of issues when you're doing these things. Look at there, half of the uh, screws are missing out of the uh, pegs. I didn't know that until just now as I'm starting to string it up. We actually already got three strings on it before I realized some of these keys were so loose, I thought, what's wrong with that? Well, then I look at it, and sure enough, there's a bunch of screws missing. So, we're going to fix that, too. Got all the strings on it. The action's not terrible. I haven't checked it yet. Um, I know the intonation is sharp. On the big E string especially, a little bit sharp on this string. So, we're going to have to taper that saddle back. Time we do that and lower the action a little bit, it'll probably be just about perfect. I don't think it's real high though. This is showing about about 125 roughly. 125 right here on this side, so I need to write that down. The base E is 125. That's pretty high. And then the high E here is probably about 115 so 115 and we want to get it down to about 90 and 80 approximately so we just got to take some off the saddle back here but at, uh, when I take that off I'm also going to send the uh, the big E string to the to the back a little bit uh, that'll get rid of some of the sharpness although the the height of it will cause it to be sh sharp but it's extremely sharp so I have a feeling doing the two things will be per make it perfect and then the B string is a little bit sharp so we're going to also work on it just a little bit I'm just going to mark it where it's at here so I know where to file back and then of course I know I want to file back across these strings here 
These two center strings seem to be almost perfect. The bottom string is pretty close. So I think we'll get it when we make those adjustments. Well, we cut this saddle way down and uh, the intonation is just almost perfect except for this E string. And for whatever reason, this E string is still somewhat sharp. It's about, oh, still 10 cents sharp on this big E string. Other than that, everything else is just about dead nuts on. I mean, it's just about as close to perfect as you can get on the rest of them. Why this one's so sharp? I don't know. It's just weird. I notice that on Martin guitars a lot though. Uh, Martin guitars, this big E string is sharp a lot. In this particular case, the only thing I could do would be to file this uh, saddle back some more. I've got it about halfway back now and that helped it some. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do is to see if I can't get it back a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to unstring the whole thing to do it, so I'm just going to do it right here. The only other option is to put a, a little saddle behind this saddle, a fake saddle behind this and glue it to it and then that'll set it back enough. But man, it needs to be back some more, I can tell for sure. This is doing it. Hopefully we'll get it back far enough. If I could get it less than 10 cents, I'm happy with that, I think. Well, that's just about as far back as I can go. So let's tune it back up and then I'll show you how sharp it is still. It's about nine. That's as good as it's going to get on that one. But the rest of them are right on the money. Well, I got to tell you, this is a one I'm kind of proud of. This was one that I just didn't think was ever going to get fixed that well. You can see how flat that top is compared to the way it used to be. That was so cocked up, it was really, I didn't think it was even fixable. And, you know, overall, it just looks pretty darn good. Yeah, you can see that whole messed up area, but keep in mind, look how bad it was originally. And yeah, it shows up, don't get me wrong, I know it ain't the best, but it's not terrible either. I mean, it's a lot better than it was. And uh, it's real solid, everything looks good now. I didn't like just really buff it out much other than I cleaned up the top. Obviously we cleaned up the whole fretboard, made the truss rod cover. Everything looks real nice on it now. The action's very good, it's right about 90,000, it's right across here and uh, listen to what she sounds like. I think she sounds real good. I picked out a uh, old song that I'm hoping the YouTube police won't get a hold of here and take all my revenue away from me. fighting men and women out there on the front keeping us free. 
So I hope you like that. I really feel like this thing turned out pretty darn good considering how bad it was when it walked in the shop. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends. And how about a thumbs up? Thank you very kindly. Yeah.